CST part 3. We will discuss about the force vector. For CST elements, there are two common loadings. The first one is body force acting within the element and the second one is pressure that acting on one of the edges of the element. Let's have a look on the first loading, body force. Suppose components of body force Fx and Fy act at the centroid of an element as shown below. The equivalent nodal forces due to the body forces are given by this formula as shown in this slide. In other words, the body force need to be divided to three so that each node will sustain the same force as shown in this figure. Please take note the body force generally will be given in the unit density or Newton per meter cube. That's why in this formula, we have to multiply the formula with thickness and area in order to eliminate the term meter cube. Now let's discuss about pressure loading for the case uniform distributed pressure. Suppose a uniform pressure acts along H12 of an element as shown below here. The first thing that we have to do is to determine the angle theta here or here. Once this theta is determined, then we have to resolve the uniform pressure into the x and y components at the related nodes as shown in this figure. We name it as Tx for x component and Ty for y components. Therefore, the equivalent nodal forces are given by this formula. The first term here is correspond to Fx1. The second term correspond to Fy1 followed by Fx2 and the last term is correspond to Fy2. This can be physically represented as shown in this figure. For node 1 and node 2, in this case, we we'll sustain the same forces in x and y direction. Now, let's discuss about linear varying pressure or non-uniform linear pressure. Suppose a linearly varying pressure acts along H12 of an element as shown in this figure. We can notice that node 1 sustains the minimum pressure while at node 2 it sustains the maximum pressure. Beside that, we can also notice that the pressure is acting in the local direction. Therefore, we have to resolve it in the global direction. For that reason, first thing we have to Determine the theta here or here. Once the theta is determined, then only we can resolve this pressure into the x and y components at the related nodes as shown in the second figure. At node 1, we name it as Tx1 for x component and Ty1 for y components. Similarly, at Note 2, we name it as Tx2 for X component and Ty2 for Y components. After we obtain the resolve values from the applied pressure Tx1, Ty1, Tx2 and Ty2, the next step we just need to plug in those values into the equivalent nodal force equation as shown here. The first term in this equation is correspond to Fx1. The second term correspond to Fy1 followed by 
fx2 and the last term is correspond to fy2. This can be physically represented as in the figure below. Okay, now let we consider example 1. Let's obtain the equivalent forces in this problem. In this case, we can see that we have two applied uniform pressures at the side edge here and at the top surface of this structure with pressure 100 kilo pascal. Therefore, we have to obtain the equivalent nodal forces for each of the applied pressure. Let's start with the applied pressure along this edge, which is along edge BC. The uniform pressure is already in the global direction as shown in this figure. Therefore, we can determine the Tx value directly from the applied pressure, which is Tx is equal negative 100 kilopascal while ty is equal to 0 as we can see in this pressure there is no pressure in the y direction next we just need to substitute this value into this uniform pressure equivalent nodal force equation as shown here after substitute into this equation and we obtain the equivalent nodal forces at the related nodes B and C as shown in this slide. Now, let's obtain the equivalent nodal forces from this top pressure. In this case, as we can see that the uniform pressure is applied in the local direction, which is normal to the edge CD. Therefore, we have to resolve this pressure into x and y components. By computing this angle equal 21.8 degree, we can determine this angle here, which is theta, equal 68.2 degree. After we resolve this pressure, we obtain Tx is equal 37.14 kilopascal and Ty is equal 92.85 kilopascal. Next, we just need to substitute this value into this uniform equivalent nodal force equation and we obtain the result as shown here at the related node C and D. After we obtain the equivalent nodal forces for each of the applied pressures at the different edges, the next step for us is to obtain the global or to assemble the equivalent nodal forces from the previous step. As shown here, we have T1 from HBC and T2 from HCD. As we can see, in both matrices, we have component FCX and FCY. Therefore, we must get the summation value for SCX and FCY as shown in this global equivalent nodal force, where this value are the summation from the two matrices above. The rest value are remain the same. To complete the problem in example 1, now, let's determine the unknown displacement as we already obtained the global equivalent forces as well as the global K matrix. We just need to set up the system linear equation which is F equal KU. The first unknown you see here is correspond to F Cx, which is negative 4 kN. The second unknown Vc is correspond to the Fcy, which is negative 5 kN. And the last unknown Vd is cor correspond 
to f dy which is equal negative 5 kilonewton as shown here once the system linear equation is ready we can solve the unknowns by using calculator and the result as shown here after we computed the nodal displacements the additional parameters that we can determine are the strain and stresses of the CST elements. For the strain, the strain in a CST element are given by this equation, which is strain is equal to matrix B times matrix U, which is the, the displacement that we have obtained previously. And the strains component that we're going to obtain are the strain in X direction, strain in Y direction, as well as the shear strain. While for the stresses, the stress in the CST element are given by this equation, which is stress is equal to matrix D times matrix B times matrix U, which is matrix D times the strain. And the stress component that we're going to obtain are the stress in X direction, stress in Y direction, as well as the shear stress. Since the strain is constant within the element, the stresses are also constant. Stresses for plane stress problem differ from those for plane strain problem by the D matrix. As we discussed previously, the D matrix for plane stress and plane strain is different. Here is the example on how to compute the stresses of a CST element. For example, in this problem, let's determine the stresses at point P. As we can see from this figure, point P is located in element 2. Thus, the stresses at point P is equal to the stresses of element 2. This is because, as mentioned previously, the strains and stresses within the element are constant. To compute the stresses for element 2, we have to refer back to element connectivity diagram of element 2. In order to refer back the value of x1, y1, x2, y2 and etc. As explained previously, the stresses in a CST element can be computed by using this equation, where the product db here is given by this formula. The arrangement of the column in this formula is follow the element connectivity of element 2. Therefore, the arrangement of the column in this formula starts with UABA, UCBC and UDBD. We can simplify our calculation by applying the Bonnie condition. As we know in this problem, UA, VA and UD are zero. By eliminating those columns, we can simplify our calculations. To complete the calculation, again, we have to refer back to our calculated properties value, such as D11, D22, D12 and etc. as shown in this slide. Once we have computed the product db as shown here, next we can determine the stresses by multiply this product db with the displacement that we have computed previously. The next step, we just need to multiply these two matrices, for example, for the first product sigma x here, we just need to multiply the first row with the displacement. For sigma y, we just need to use the second row of the product db, multiply both with the displacement. And the last one, for the shear stress, tau xy, we just need to use the third row of product db and multiply with the calculated displacement. All the computed stresses 
as shown in this slide. Here is the last parameter of the theory that related to the CST element. The displacement at any point within the element can be determined by using the given formula here, where the first formula is to determine the displacement in x direction, u, and the second formula is to determine the displacement in y direction where from these two equations the n1, n2 and n3 are the shape function that can be determined by using the formula shown in this in this slide. To determine the displacement of that particular point, it is mandatory to know its coordinate. As from its coordinate, we can determine the value of n1 n2 and n3 that later on we will substitute this n1 n2 and n3 into this equation in order to compute the, the displacement in x as well as the displacement in y the last slide in this video show the example on how to determine the displacement at any point within the element in this example we would like to determine the displacement of point P if it is located 20 mm from the left wall and 60 mm from the base. From this information, we can determine the coordinate of point P. The next step that we have to do is to refer back to the element connectivity diagram of element 2 as we need to know the information or the value of x1, y1, x2, y2 and etc. So by using the available equations, we can determine all the unknowns n1, n2, and n3, as shown in this slide. So once we have computed the, the value of n1, n2, and n3, then we can determine the displacement of point P in x and y direction by using this equation for displacement in x direction as we know the displacement value from the previous uh, calculated displacement so in this case the u1 is ua u2 is uc and u3 is ud as for element 2 the element connectivity is a c d therefore u1 is ua u2 is uc and u3 is ud by replacing the value n1 n2 n3 as well as the distressment value of the nodes in element 2 we can compute the displacement of point p as shown in this slide similarly we can apply the same method to compute or to determine the displacement in y direction of point P as shown in this slide.